In business tonight, acting Prime Minister Richard Seeley has described Sajakor Life Inc.'s listing on the London Stock Exchange as a key moment in its history. This as he commended the company on the achievement of its 175th anniversary at a reception at Fusion Restaurant at Lime Grove. He says being listed on the London Stock Exchange in 2007 showed that the company was indeed a global brand. As a Barbadian, I felt very proud that a company that is indigenous to uh, Barbados can have its listing on the London Stock Exchange. And again, there's a lot that we can gather from that in terms of those simple Barbadian values that can make it on the international stage. And um, we all know what we have done in other arenas. Despite a failed bid to gain control of Banks Holdings Limited, Ansa Macau Barbados Limited is still interested in trying to acquire another brewery in the Caribbean. And President and Chief Executive Officer of that company, Nicholas Mute, says they still have their eyes on some interest in Barbados. And he made the comments to journalists at a press conference at the Accra Beach Hotel. We are accustomed to um, growing through acquisition. So we, didn't, we weren't successful here and, and we will look at other options. Um, we are looking at other options in terms of brewery options outside of Barbados. Obviously, I, there's no other brewery option in Barbados. So we are looking at other brewery options um, in the region and outside of the region. And we are also looking in Barbados at other opportunities um, to acquire other companies that are not in the brewing sector. Here now is a look at how stocks traded on selected exchanges across our region. Relations between Barbados and Cuba are set to intensify with the announcement of several initiatives between the two countries. In Cuba's ambassador way. to Barbados, Francisco Fernandez, unveiled a slew of initiatives during the opening of a panel discussion to mark CARICOM Cuba Day at the NUPW headquarters last night. It also marked the 43rd anniversary of the Barbados-Cuba relationship. Mr. Fernandez says Cuba is preparing for visits from the ministers of tourism and education, as well as delegations from the University of the West Indies and other business leaders. He says Cuba is deeply grateful to Barbados for its support during the years-long embargo enforced by the United States and wants to do more to strengthen the bond. We have uh, an, 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 an export, um, export contract in place, but it, it is about to be extended and upgraded with other disciplines in uh, biking, swimming, boxing, volleyball, hockey, table tennis, and we are about to accept some initiative from the National Council of uh, Sport of Barbados to improve our cricket team, because we have a cricket team. <laughs> so this, this uh, talks about integration also. So in, in culture, we have a culture agreement in place but it is also about to be enhanced with heritage restoration uh, actions. Meantime, Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Maxine McLean says those relations will keep growing. She says Cuba's recognition of the devastating impact of climate change and its response to disasters has been welcomed. The increase in severity of weather systems both here in the Caribbean and internationally is largely accepted as one of the consequences of climate change. These and other factors connected to the utilization of our natural resources have been met with a strong and practical response by Cuba. This was most recently evidenced by President Raul Castro's immediate response to the flooding in Dominica. Indeed, this response was not a knee-jerk reaction to extreme weather conditions, but was born out of a settled agenda of supporting the members of the Caribbean community in the area of disaster response. 
Well, there's been a significant increase in the number of homeless people in Barbados. Chairman of the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society, Kimar Safri, says in one program alone, they took in 80 rather than the planned 30 clients this year. He's attributed the increase to the economic conditions and wants landlords to show more compassion in cases where people have lost their jobs. Some persons are saying landlords are not giving them the opportunity to um, are, the, are allowing them in the home any length of time, any length of time. So we've seen that in the year and we really want to plead to the landlords to just work with your tenants and allowing them some time to find a job and, and not putting them out on the streets and um, allowing them just to come and roam the streets and have no place to go. And in giving an update on the work so far, Mr. Safri says since its inception in 2011, the society has successfully rehabilitated and reintegrated 50 people. He says the society is still seriously pursuing its goal of owning its own property. In this year alone, and, I've, uh, and I'm also seeing it from other institutions that I've visited, and also um, I, I can tell you that we probably over... Um, um, I stand corrected, but we could probably be over 30 young persons that we've been seeing for the year, and that's between 16 to 21 that, we, that we've seen um, coming into the organization with family by themselves.